Murdered an innocent. One of our own. Evil has blossomed in you. Our time together has come to an end. You will not leave me. Marnie's powers have multiplied exponentially now that she's bound Antonia to her. And Marnie has taken over. Marnie's taken over with Antonia's powers. She realizes that the jig is up for her. If, you know, at whatever point the vampires find her, she's not gonna last. So she's fighting, you know, to save herself. So what Fiona chose to do was play it with Marnie's voice, but rather than a timid Marnie, she's come on with a much stronger, aggressive Marnie. I am not a punching bag! Suki is desperate to stop her, and the only way Suki can really stop her is with reasoning. She appeals to her sense of, you know, humanity. And for a minute, it looks like she's getting through to Marnie, but then, of course, the vampires screw it all up. Hiding behind magic like a coward does not become you. This season has been about Sookie and Eric versus Sookie and Bill. Marnie comes out and says, look, I will save Sookie if you guys kill yourselves and sort of end my problem. And Bill and Eric both profess to love her more than they love themselves, and so this really gives them a chance to prove it. And they agree. Uh, and this is very upsetting not only to Sookie, but to Jessica and to Pam, you know, these uh, Bill and Eric are their makers. They don't want to lose them. That is something that Pam cannot believe. She freaks out and she goes and petulantly and impulsively grabs a, an RPG and shoots it at Moon Goddess. Eric is very angry with her. Bill is angry with her. She winds up singeing Jason and it fractures her relationship with Eric. You could have killed her! After 150 years together, it's over. I think throughout the next couple episodes of next season, we're gonna see that there's a problem with Eric and Pam because Pam disobeyed him. This protection spell is sort of the sun harnessed, so if they touch it, it's like a bug zapper for vampires. Marnie is furious with the vampires, she casts a spell, and when we talked about it in the production meeting, we weren't sure how much money we were gonna have for it, and it turned out that a large portion of it was just the actors trying to act being pulled toward a force field, which it's impossible to do. It breaks the laws of physics. It's like trying to, you know, fall upward. We're trying to film a very emotional, frightening scene, and I mean, these poor actors could not stop laughing. It was a little tricky, and it was also uh, hilarious. Wait, did I do that? Jesus and Lafayette um, are doing this ritual over Casey's dead body in, in the bathroom at Moon Goddess. Lafayette has no idea what's going on. Jesus is pulling on all his black magic to try to find a way to unbind Antonia and Marnie. It's sort of a little Greek tragedy in there. Jesus is on Marnie's side in the beginning and there's a, a cleft and then he has to fight his former mentor. So it's been a tough journey for Jesus, but it all, it all became worth it. Kevin is a very nice, happy guy and Jesus in this one is really just hell-bent on one thing and he's in a small room he's got a lot to do it's not pleasant a lot of it um, he's covered in junk uh, but he did a great job and he does save the day usually the villain dies in episode 12 but in this season the villain dies in episode 11. I had a lot of discussion with um, Fiona Shaw about what her final line should be before she shot because she was she wanted it to be something memorable and she felt like Marnie deserved a real memorable death and so we talked a lot about it. Alan Ball, the creator of the show, also felt that Marnie should not be deferential in any way. She should be defiant till the end so we tried to give her something that both those criterion. No one lives forever! Not even you!